Hi, Dave Williams here, and today I want to talk about SR latches. The way I'd like to introduce the concept of SR latches is to look at an analogy. Let's say we've got this big this conveyor belt system, and this conveyor belt is controlled by these two big push buttons. One push button says start, and the other push button says stop. Now these are the type of buttons that you push them in and release them when they go in and they pop back out so that they don't stay depressed when you press them. Now if this conveyor belt system was stopped, it wasn't, it wasn't running, if you wanted to start it, you'd go up and you'd push the start button. You'd push the start button in and release it, the button would put, go in, pop back out, and the conveyor belt system would start up. Now if you want to stop the system, you go up and you push the stop button, you push the stop button in and release it, and the conveyor belt system stops. Now in the, when the conveyor belt is, is running, this, both the start and the stop buttons are not pushed in. And when the conveyor belt is stopped, again, both the start and the stop button buttons are not pushed in. So I have this system where I have two control signals, the start and the stop buttons, that control the state of the conveyor belt turn it either on or off. And the effect of the control signals depends on the state of the motor. So if the motor is already running and I push start, that's going to have no effect because it's already running. In other words, the state of the motor depends not only on the inputs but also on the present state of the motor. In digital circuitry there's a whole class of devices for which this statement also applies and this class is made up of latches and flip-flops. And the simplest type of latch is one that is directly analogous to this start-stop motor control system, and that is called an SR latch. And the schematic block for an SR latch looks like this. Here's the block for which, which has the, the circuitry inside. It has an S signal coming in has an R signal coming in, so it has these two inputs, and then it has an output called Q and another output called Q bar, which is supposed to be the opposite of Q. So we've got this system that has two inputs and two outputs, and the outputs, the values of the outputs determine what the state of this SR latch looks like. So for this SR latch, just like with this, just like for this control system start stop buttons for this motor, the state or the values of the output are determined by not only the inputs but also the current value of the outputs. For an SR latch, we can come up with kind of a truth table to describe the operation of the latch. So just like with truth tables we've seen in the past, we can list all of our inputs. So S and R are the two inputs, and we can have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then for each one of the inputs, we list, what the, out we list the outputs, what value the outputs will be. And here we have, actually have two outputs, Q and Q bar. Now unlike with a, a truth table for a combinational logic circuit, you do not necessarily have the same output or the same state for some given input. So for example, in the zero, when, when you have zero, zero at your input, you are neither setting nor resetting. So you're not putting this latch into a set state or pushing it into a reset state. So you will not have any change in your latch. Q and Q bar will be unchanged. So whatever value they had is the value that they will maintain as long as S and R are both zero. Now when S is low, you're not setting, and R is high, you are resetting. You force Q to go low and Q bar to go high. When S is one, so you're setting, but R is zero, you're not resetting. Q goes high and Q bar goes low. Now in this last state, when S is high so you're setting and R is high so you're resetting, what happens is Q and Q bar will both go to zero, but this particular state here is considered 
invalid. It can happen, but it's an invalid state because both q and q bar are zero. So q and the opposite of q are equal to each other, which is just doesn't make any sense. To get a better idea of the SR latch in operation, let's look at a timing diagram. For the SR latch. So let's say that all of these signals start at zero. So SR, Q starts at zero, I guess Q bar should start at one. So let's say at this point in time, S goes high and then low again. R is low for that period of time, for that same period of time. So it's at this point in time here where the S goes high that the Q goes high and Q bar goes low. At this instant in time when S goes low, Q does not change because at that point in time we are neither setting nor resetting so we don't change, we're not changing the system. So Q and Q bar maintain their values when S goes low. Let's say R pulses high at this instant in time while S is remaining low. So we are forcing, right at this instant in time, we are forcing the system to reset. So Q is going to go low and Q bar, the opposite of Q, is going to go high. If we pulse reset high again here, nothing's going to change because the system was already reset. So Q and Q bar will maintain their values while well, they'll be forced to reset, but they're already reset. So they're going to, they're going to maintain their values. And then when, when R goes low again, they are in the, this latch state. So they, again, during this time period, Q and Q bar will not change their values. So this SR latch that we're looking at right now is an active high SR latch, which means that the signal needs to be high to force the operation. Uh, so an S, go, S being high while R is low forces a set. S being low while R being high forces a reset. The opposite of the active high SR latch is the act of low SR latch, where an S low R high forces the set, and an R low S high forces the reset. I'll leave it to you as an exercise to try to figure out what the truth table for the active low SR latch looks like. So if you haven't already, check out my digital electronics playlist for more videos on latches and flip-flops. Thanks for listening.